What a beautiful day it is here in Minnesota driving the Land Rover Defender 90. Oh, what is, what's this up here? Yeah, that's fine, gentlemen. How's it going, sir? You need Hi. a You need a lift? Yeah, buddy. Well, uh, you got two bags. Uh, well, we can try to make that fit. Hello everybody and welcome to Performance on Wheels. Today's video is requested by a commenter on a previous video. I thought it was a great idea guys, so we're going to go ahead and make a video specific to the 90 and specific to that request that we saw in one of the comments of a previous Defender video. And that is, is the Defender 90 practical? The thing a lot of people don't understand about the Defender 90 is how big it actually is. And in pictures, it doesn't look very practical. But practical, it's it's a very broad term. It is, yeah. So what does that mean? Is it feasible for you? So uh, let's put it into perspective. If you're a single individual, if you are just uh, uh, married or a couple uh, versus having a family of one, two, three, or four, uh, kind of take that stuff into account when we get into today's video and I think that is what will make the Defender practical for you or not. We're also going to touch base very briefly since it is another Defender video and I know if you're in the market for a Defender the reliability issue is on your mind. We have rolled over another digit. We're up past 3,000 miles now, so we'll touch on the issues we've experienced. So when it comes to getting into the Defender and being in the front seat, you would you would never know the difference if you're in a 110 or a 90. It's the exact you know, same vehicle would, up here. Especially if you have the uh, rear view mirror camera. Right, and that, that actually trips you out a little yeah. bit. You forget that you're driving this compact deal when you're looking in the rear view mirror and it's yeah. a camera because you don't see the tire, you don't see the seats yeah. behind you. So you think you're driving this tank with the view that the Defender gives you over the dashboard. Which it is still very large. It is, it, it is. is. I mean, look at the room like we have in here between us. Yeah. It's great. We have a ton of room. You feel like you're driving a truck, driving the Defender with the size that's in it. It has the feel of a full-size truck. Yeah, it does. Well, here we are in the back seat of the Defender 90. I'm about 5'11", what are you, like six? I'm like six foot. We're both, uh, I'm like 210, 215 pounds. I'm like 180. So there you go. You can get two adults in here. I'll go ahead and pull the seat back. Not all the way. Let's try that one more time. It doesn't move back all the way unless you pull the lever. There we go. There you go. So it has to be folded forward yep. for it to move back, yep. which you can do. Uh, the lever's just up on the, the shoulder there. You flip that up and it moves forward out of the way. So you can get back here and it's not bad, right? No, so it's that actually, seat, it's very roomy. Yeah, for... that front seat is back all the way and I can literally stretch my legs out. Yeah. Like first class in an airplane type there, of deal. There's a lot of space in the bag. A couple other things that I like is I like the places you can put your uh, your, your arms, yeah. right? So you have two different elevations that you can rest your arm. You do. And they're both comfortable. And then like you just pulled down the armrest there. Yeah. Not to mention it's not claustrophobic at all, especially if you have the sunroof because you got your two back windows, you have your safari windows, and like it's like a big window around your whole body when you're in the bag. For sure. So without a doubt, you can have four adults in the Defender 90 yep. without issue. Getting in obviously is a little bit. Let's just snuggle in close here. Obviously, there's not three of us. There's only two of us. Yeah, but three of us would be, that'd be tight. It would be tight, but it's doable. So not you wouldn't, for a long period of time. Right. You wouldn't want to take a road trip by any means, but you can get five adults in here. Like, I still have plenty of leg room. You, the leg room's not the issue. It's more the shoulder room. I have a feeling the rear seat in this is pretty similar to the rear seat in the uh, 110. It's not necessarily true because of the height difference. So because of where the Defender 90 seat yes, falls. Yes, I'm saying the... The, the width-wise? Like yes. Yeah, for sure. The Defender 90 is pretty simple. You got front seats, which is identical to a 110, which of course you can also get as that bench seat. Then we move to the back seat, which isn't identical to the 110 because of height. So 110 would be like a normal truck. 90 is the floor is a little up closer to you, yet it's still comfortable. However, still the same width. Yep. can still fit the same amount of people. And part of that with that back seat in the 90, another thing that's different from the 110 is the fact that the seats 
will not fold flat. So that, that's just another thing. There's a trick to that. You can actually take the, uh, the seat cushion out, which that's not convenient to do. Not convenient. But if you need the seats to be flat, which we'll show you in a second here, you can actually take that uh, seat bottom out. I'm not gonna take the seat bottom out, but it's pretty simple to do. All right, well, here we move to the back, and this is where you really see those 17 inches that it is shorter than the 110. Yeah, so it's the same door, the same opening, everything back here is the 110 as well. And can I just say that this door is the most practical door that there is on any SUV for getting stuff in. The G-Wagon has the same design. It's just so easy to move things inside yeah. without hitting your head. You have the most entry room. I actually saw something recently, too, on the overseas models. We don't have it in the United States, but like the cargo versions. Yeah, the one that doesn't have that back window. Yep, and I didn't realize you can get that as the uh, the 110 as well. I think they call them the hard top. Okay. But anyways, it's just, it's 100% flat level floor throughout, whether it's the 110 or the 90. And uh, it, it's actually big enough that you can put a four by four pallet back here and the capacity, the payload that the Defender has is pretty substantial. That's cool. Um, when we're talking about the back here, so we have some real life items that we're gonna show with you guys putting into the uh, Defender here in just a minute, but let's just talk about what we have first. We have like a, a 40, 20, 40. Uh, these two have to fold down together. However, the middle section can fold down independently, and then the, the, the passenger side can fold down on its own or all three together. So when we do that, guys, you have to hold the, uh, fold the headrest down, which is just a button, and then there's a little lever there on the side, and they fold flat like that pretty easily. So there's a lot of people that ask, what is it like? Can I sleep in the back of my Defender? So let's just climb on in there and see what it looks like with two adults and a Defender 90. So obviously, um, sleeping would be uncomfortable. So again, six feet tall, feet hanging out the back. Um, we have the, the front seats all the way back. So you can't really do it. Because of the incline on the seats and the lack of room, um, you'd have to put some sort of makeshift bed in here. Uh, but I am all the way, uh, my, my back is to the back of the front seat. As and, is mine. And you can see my feet hang out the rear end. So that gives you an idea of, uh, with the seats down, how much cargo room you have. We're gonna use some other examples right now with some luggage. All right, guys, our Defender videos you guys have really liked them and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback so how come you guys are not subscribing only 2.7 percent of all of our viewers across all of our channel views have subscribed so scroll down hit subscribe hit like it's free you can always unsubscribe later help us grow as a channel comment down below what we can improve on and enjoy the rest of the video i will fully admit that pulling the seats back up it's not the most user friendly, and I say that because I'd like to see a strap of some sort. You kind of got to stick your finger into the tether that's for uh, child seats and yank up with that. So there, there's a decent amount of weight that you're pulling up with your finger if you're doing it from the back. Obviously, you can go to the front of the car and uh, maneuver them up that way. Other than that, my other complaint with the Defender 90 is the seatbelts. You have to move the seatbelts to fold the seat down, and you have to move the seatbelt to pull it back up because it is uh, it just goes right in the way of where the, the, the latch is. Let's put some real life events into loading the Defender 90. What I will say first off is with the Defender 90, at least our model came with the storage crate. The storage crate is absolutely amazing. It says Land Rover right on it. It's got these sweet handles. It even has these buckles that you can tie it down and it fits in the back like flawlessly, right? You bring that into the grocery store, you put it into your cart. I love Costco, so you put this right in there and you fill it up and you walk this right into your house. It works amazing, right? So let's say we're out for an evening, we go out to dinner, and then Grandma Ida calls. Hey guys, I just landed. I'm at the airport. Come pick me up. You're in the Defender 90. Can you make it happen? That's what we need to know. Grandma Ida shows up with a full-size suitcase. Will that fit in a Defender 90? Well, yeah, of course it'll fit that way. What I can say about having a 90 is this is for people that enjoy playing Tetris. If you were a Tetris fan in the mid 80s, you know that the Defender 90 is for you because you can get creative on how you put things in to the back. You have to get creative. So Grandma Ida shows up, she's got her 70 pound suitcase, and then she says, oh, Johnny, we got the other suitcase too. I brought my new 20 year old boyfriend. So we, we, need, we need another suitcase to fit in the Defender 90. What are we gonna do, guys? It doesn't fit this way. 
put this is where the creativity comes in to having it you can put it in this way right but what if you were at the grocery store first before grandma ida calls with her new boyfriend and says hey come pick us up at the airport well then we really got to get creative we got to take everything out we got to have room for four people in the cabin and all the luggage and groceries so what are we going to do guys we show up to the airport we fold our seat down we're out there in the baggage claim oh that one's not going to work first let's get this one in so we throw this one in we put that on its back we're good to go we're rushing airport police are yelling at us oh man oh we're kind of crammed up against the roof a little groceries what's up we throw those in we get our bags going throw a grocery bag over here we got another grocery bag here we can throw a grocery bag over here right and guess what dsw had a sale let's go asics what's up we got some shoes in here we got some shoes over there grandma ida's not gonna make it without her 12 pack of dr pepper here's her new 20 year old boyfriend hey what's up i got my dr pepper so take note guys a 12 pack of pop is about the maximum depth at floor level that you have in the defender 90. even as that goes up i won't clear the door being closed so a 12 pack of pop at the floor level that's the depth that is in the defender 90. well here i am cramped in the back and he's still got to fit back here so let's see how this works <laughs> don't whack the, don't whack the other camera on your way in now be careful okay. all right let's pull this seat back uh it's tight but uh we could make it work we can do it so guys we have two like full-size things of luggage yep we have four adults in the defender yep we have a week's worth of groceries and we have a couple new pairs of shoes so i would say based on that the defender is pretty practical however we're missing one thing where the heck is grandma ida gonna sit we already had four people in here we did yeah what about her boyfriend i thought you were her boyfriend wait hold on who's grandma ida so guys <laughs> ultimately what it comes down to is you can make the defender 90 practical but it comes with thought it comes with uh kind of thinking things out thinking things through sometimes it doesn't come easy but i haven't run into a situation yet where i couldn't be successful in uh figuring out what i was trying to do you know where the defender 90 comes really practical when the air conditioning's on when it has to pull the 110 out of a corner, it can't get around. What's up? Here's why the Defender 90 is better than the Defender 110. It is easy to drive, it's easy to park, it's very nimble, it's lighter. I mean, check out this turning radius, not to mention that it starts at about $4,000 less than the Defender 110. Well, that pretty much sums up the video on if it is practical or not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's touch base on reliability quick. Okay. Okay, so here's what I got, guys. I mentioned a couple things in a previous video, and my statement stays exactly the same. Here's a few things I'm noticing is uh, the crinks and crinkles and cracking throughout the Defender is what I'm noticing. The so, cabin? Throughout the cabin, yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. So up by my head, same thing, up by the window. It has nothing to do with the sunroof. Someone commented about that. There's like crinkling that occurs pretty much at any speed right by my head. I still have the rear speaker on the, uh, the, the driver's side, that the song with enough bass, that makes some noise. I also am noticing that my driver's seat has a little click to it. So if I lean back and move forward just a little bit, I can feel a clicking. So all I'm saying is there might be some quality issues inside of the cabin. They're minimal in my mind, but they can be annoying. If I were buying a Defender that was 90,000 versus one that was a little bit under 60,000, I might be pretty annoyed by some of these nuisances that I'm talking about. The only other thing I can say is you still get the intermittent, uh, my backup camera doesn't work the next time it does. So that happens maybe once in every 30 times starting the car that the backup camera won't be there uh, or your apple car play won't connect the next time it will so there are definitely 
uh, little nuisances like that that are being experienced. Other than that, I truly love this thing. I love riding in it. I love driving in it. It's just a fun vehicle to drive. All right, now let's wrap up the video on if it was practical or not. It is practical if you make it practical. However, I would still say- It comes it, with effort. It comes with effort. And if you have a family of five and you are getting a ton of groceries, like it just doesn't make any sense. Right, so like, your, your back seat's gonna be down like all the time. Yeah. Like maybe a family of three. You yeah, a family of three, totally. I don't know that I'd wanna be doing it if someone was in a child seat though. That would yeah. be pretty annoying. Yep. If you had, uh, you know, it, a, a teenager, a, yeah. a preteen type of deal, you could totally rock it. Now, if they're a hockey player and a football player and everything else, then yeah. it's a different story. Yeah. So uh, I think it's an awesome, completely practical vehicle for two, a family of two to three. Um, I'd rock it all day, every day. I am not disappointed and I do not regret the decision with the two door over the four door. I like the uniqueness. I love the drivability of it. Not to mention, I've only seen one other two door since you've gotten it. Right, I've seen like seven or eight one tens. Yeah. See those all the time, man. Where's all the nineties at? What's up? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video on performance on wheels. Hope you enjoyed. Comment down below some other videos, ideas, and maybe we can get to them. Have a great day.